so like I didn't know I didn't know they made cool music or anything and then Willie like me and Willie started talking just in that group and then we made a song together um, and then like I guess through that I met like a lot of the disciple people and then met Getter mm-hmm. and met like my management now and like whatever and then when I moved here and I met like Getter and and like Nick Coletti and stuff they were they were obviously like pretty big on Vine and I was telling them like yeah I just like I don't know I, I just like have always wanted to do that and just haven't done it and they were just like yeah you should just like do it who cares and so I was like okay and so I did it <laughs> <laughs> like I was definitely extremely anxious the whole time like I was like really nervous. I, I, I don't know how to describe it. it. It's like, I was just very nervous. And it was like, it was sick, but I, I was, I couldn't really like fully enjoy it until like the last like two minutes of my set. Oh, no. and I was like, okay, I'm cool, I got it. Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk. Today I'm here with Spa. Hey. <laughs> so you were born in California? Yeah, dude. I was born in Fresno, Cal. Well, yeah, Fresno, California. Oh, okay. And That's too, not too far, right? No, nah, yeah, it's it's like it's like three and a half hours. Yeah. Like, north from here, basically. Mm-hmm. Are your parents originally from Fresno as well? My dad kind of is, like. I don't know. My dad was not born in California. He was born in like Wyoming or something, but he, yeah, he lived in California all his life, but he lived in like Yosemite and stuff as a kid. Oh, wow. Um, That's so cool. Because his dad, yeah, his dad, like my grandpa worked at like a hotel there or something, like managed a hotel. Mm -hmm. Um, So they like lived there, like my dad and all his siblings and stuff like lived in Yosemite for I don't actually know when they moved to Fresno, but they moved from Yosemite to Fresno when my dad was in like high school, I think. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and then my mom is from uh, Santa Maria, which is like the central coast of mm-hmm. California. And then she moved to Fresno when she was like 18 or something. So yeah, like they're not like from there, but they're from like California. Mm-hmm. And what, what careers are they in? Uh, my dad just like basically like works on cars and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, yeah, my dad, he's like, he's not like a mechanic, but like he is, you know, like he, <laughs> like he, he basically like just buys old cars and like makes them cool and then sells them. Mm-hmm. And then my mom uh, does like, bookkeeping and accounting and stuff. Oh, so you got your creative side from your dad, I guess? Yeah, I yeah. Know. yeah. No, yeah, definitely, yeah. My mom always says that too. She's like, dude, you don't, like, you definitely didn't get any creativity from me. Yeah, I kind of imagine you as an accountant. Yeah, no, d- yeah, <laughs> no, I know, yeah. Yeah, it's funny, like, my, my uh, old business manager, I remember having a meeting with him one time and I was just like, he was explaining, like, certain things that he does for, like, accounting and stuff, and I was just like, dude, do you like like and I like said it nicely because I didn't I wasn't like meant to be yeah. insulting to him or anything but I was just like do you like doing this like this sounds miserable to me I can't imagine yeah, like same. doing taxes and stuff for like I don't know that just sounds like it sucks <laughs> but yeah and, <laughs> anyways and <laughs> um, what kind of music were they playing in the house when you were growing up um like My dad was always into, like, I don't know, he liked, um, I guess some just, like, classic dad music, like, um, like Dave Matthews Band and stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, and then he liked, like, ZZ Top and stuff, too, um, jeez, dude. (laughs) They're going super fast. Um, so, like some of that but my parents are divorced so I have a stepdad too and he likes like metal and so like 
Oh, so you got Metallica it from Metallica and stuff. Yeah, some. And my mom just kind of like, oh, my mom like loves Madonna. So it was like <laughs> Madonna and like that type of like 80s like pop music and stuff. And then like dad music for my dad, like, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, Dave Matthews band and stuff. And then like my stepdad was always playing like Metallica and mm -hmm. stuff. Was that from the early on that you were, you had a um, step stepdad who was showing you all this metal Yeah, music? like, he never really like showed it to me, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, they like, I mean, he, yeah, he's like been in my life since I was like five or six oh, or something wow. like that. Yeah, so it was when I was like really little. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then which metal artists were yeah. you listening to when you started finding it yourself? Well, so like, I don't know. I, I don't know why this happened, but one day, cause I wasn't ever really that into music before I decided like I wanted to play or and like make music. Mm -hmm. I just thought like music was kind of tight, but I don't, I don't know why, but one day, cause my dad played guitar too. At, like he plays guitar or whatever. So I, I was like, well, I want to play the guitar. Like one day I just decided like, I just want to learn to play the guitar. And so like, I asked my dad if I could borrow an acoustic guitar that he had. And he's like, yeah. Cause I, I was like mostly living at my mom's house. So I like mm -hmm. took the guitar from my dad's to my mom's and like learned how to, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to learn how to like read guitar tabs and for some reason, I like liked Guns N' Roses a lot, yeah. but I don't know why, because I don't know that anybody had like showed me them. But, so I was just like, all right, I'm gonna learn how to play Sweet Child of Mine on a guitar. So I did. <laughs> and, and so like, but like through that, I, I got into like, um, I don't know, just like, I guess Metallica was like the next big, like, I, I mean, I still love Metallica, but that that was, like, who I really liked a lot mm -hmm. all throughout, like, middle school and stuff. Were you in a bunch of bands? No, not really. Like, I was never in, like, a band band. I, I just, like, me and my friend Ben, who he started playing guitar, too, um, we would just, like, jam in my garage and stuff. But that was that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And then I started playing drums too. In oh. in like high, I think it was like my freshman year of high school. I, I just started playing like drums, and I kind of stopped playing guitar as much, and I'll just play the drums. Mm -hmm. So you it was didn't want to join a band or no, not really. Like, well, I don't know. Like, I didn't. I never even thought about it really. Mm. Like, I I didn't really know anybody that was, like, starting bands and stuff. Like, it was kind of just me and, like, a few of my friends, like, played drums and, like, guitar and whatever and, like, bass. So, it, like, we never even thought of, like, hey, we should start a band and, like, make songs. It was just kind of something that we did and we were, like, into. But yeah. we didn't, like, think of it like that, you know? Like, mm. I don't know. We just thought of it as, like yeah, you want to come over and, like, jam in my garage. And so we would, but, like, we didn't think of it as, like, starting a band. Yeah. For whatever reason. How else would you describe your personality back then growing up? Um, I don't know. I feel like I was, like, rebellious, but not also, like, not rebellious at all. <laughs> like, I, I didn't, like, I wasn't bad in school. I didn't, like, I, I was, like, got good grades, whatever, whatever. But like, part of me wanted to just be like, yeah, I'm a rebel. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. That's like a weird way to describe it. But yeah, I was like. So you did well in school though? Yeah. Did you like put a lot of time to study or did it just come naturally No, I like, I yeah, it just like, I was just like pretty good at it. And I, but I didn't like, I didn't spend any time at all oh, like so doing home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kids are like, oh, I wish I Yeah, and I like knew. that sounds, I don't know, like even saying that sounds like dumb and arrogant, but I, I definitely wish that I would have probably spent more time like caring about being smart and stuff. But I, I basically only did it just because that like, that's just like 
what you do. I don't know. In my mind, it was just like, yeah, I'm going to school, so like I shouldn't do bad at it. I should just like do good. But other mm. than that, I didn't care. Yeah. And then, so you found Skrillex to your girlfriend back then? Yeah, yeah. So like my like ex girlfriend showed me, or or like kids had kind of been like talking about like dubstep and stuff, but. I always thought it was lame because I was like, yeah, like I like metal. I don't like dubstep. That's like dumb. Like that's not real instruments and stuff. But then I heard, I like she played like Skrillex or something, and I was like, whoa, this is cool because it's like heavy, like metal, and it makes you want to like get angry and violent, like metal does. Mm -hmm. But it's like weird. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know yeah. but yeah yeah so I heard that and I think this is weird too I totally forgot about this my like one of my uncles had given me because at that point I had already been playing like guitar and drums and stuff for a couple years um, and I always like I always wanted to be like a musician since since I started playing guitar and everything, I was like, I want to be a musician and stuff. So I knew, that's why I think it's weird that I didn't like try to be in a band or anything. Cause I was just like, I knew that that was like a goal of mine, mm -hmm. but I didn't like try to be in a band and stuff, which is like weird. Cause I don't know. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, like, yeah, I found Skrillex and then got it. You immediately start producing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is like my uncle had given me like so, like Cubase disc that I installed like a year before I even got into, or like a while before I got into like electronic music oh, wow. and stuff. So, but I didn't, I wasn't using that. I just like Why thought it was funny. Uh, I don't know. He like, well, he kind of produced music too, but oh. I don't actually know. He just like started producing music because my uncle, he's pretty young. He's like. I mean, he's in his, like, 30s now, but oh, okay. we're, we're not that far apart in age. Like, we're, like, not even 10 years apart, I don't think. We're, like, yeah. seven or eight years apart. But, yeah, so he just, like, had that from producing music in college or whatever and, like, gave it to me. And I just thought it was funny to, like, mess around with, like, auto-tune and stuff. But that was, like, the extent of it. I just, like, installed it, messed around with, like, <laughs> auto-tune and stuff and then just, like, forgot about it. And then I... I think I torrented like FL Studio and then I found out Skrillex used Ableton. So then I stole Ableton <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And then I like, just like figured it out. <laughs> How old were you at this point? Um, like 16 probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was like a sophomore in high school. And then immediately did you go by Spock? Um, no, like at first, well, cause this is weird too. When I was in like middle school, me and like that uncle and one of my other uncles, we just like, we made a band, I guess, but oh. it wasn't really like, I guess I didn't like, we never took it seriously. It was just like a funny thing that we did and like made weird, funny music where like I played guitar. One of my uncles made like some beats and then we would like yell over it. <laughs> So it wasn't like ever a serious thing, mm -hmm. but we went under like a different name and then we and then I just like Took that for like Not very long and then I changed it. Mm-hmm. Then how did he come up with your name? Uh, cuz it's my last name. So oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah That's so easy. Yeah, it was so like I cuz I played sports and stuff growing up so like everybody just always called me Spock and then oh. so one of my friends was like, dude, you should just like go by Spock. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were so lucky you have a cool last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then how are you getting your music out there? Uh, at the time, like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I just like, I wasn't. <laughs> like, Did you even put on SoundCloud? Yeah, I, I put on some stuff on SoundCloud. Um, but like also, at that time, since I was like super new to producing and all my other experience with like playing guitar and everything, I was just like basically playing covers and stuff of other, of like Metallica and Slayer and stuff. So like when I first started producing, 
I would basically just rip people off. Like, but I didn't think of it as like ripping them off because I was like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, so I would just kind of like copy the song structure and this, try to make their, the like those sounds and stuff. But I would release the music because I was like 16. I didn't know that like, hey, you shouldn't do that. So like some people would like get mad at me and be like, yo, you're just like copying other people and stuff. And I was like, yeah, but like, who cares? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just like making music for fun, like trying to learn how to make music. So like, what does it matter? But um, I would like submit my music to like certain blogs and stuff. Like that's dubstep.net? Or yeah, dubstep.net. Yeah. Um, there was a couple, I don't remember. I think that, I mean, that was the big one. Like trying to get on dubstep.net was like a big deal and I got in there a couple times which was sick and then yeah I, I guess like also I had met like um other producers in this random like Facebook producer group oh yeah you met Barely Alive yeah yeah I yeah. met Barely Alive through that and that was like I think they had just started the Barely Alive project oh, wow. like uh so it was funny because like I had gotten like a couple songs on dubstep.net or whatever. So I had like, you know, a thousand followers or whatever at the time. And like, they didn't have any because they had like just started the project and released like one song. So like, I didn't know, I didn't know they made cool music or anything. And then Willie, like me and Willie started talking just in that group. And then we made a song together. Um, and then like, I guess through that I met like, a lot of the disciple people and then met Getter and mm -hmm. met like my management now and like whatever so it's all like a weird process of like how old were you at this point well um when I met Willie and Matt I was like uh probably 17 maybe mm -hmm. so it happened like I mean, so I met them within like, yeah, probably a year or two of producing, of like starting to produce. I might have been 18, I don't remember, but yeah, it was like within a year or two of starting to produce. And then... Did you think about going to college? Yeah, like I originally no, because... Yeah, yeah, so that makes sense. I met them like my senior year of high school. And by that time, I knew that I wanted to like be uh, like... Uh, professional producer you know so mm -hmm. um I didn't want to go to college I knew that because I didn't really care about school so I was just like delivering pizzas and stuff and um just like whatever I, like I was I got that job like got a job delivering pizzas uh like towards the end of my senior year I think um so I was just like well I'll just do this for like a year and try and figure out I didn't put like a time limit on it, but I was just like, I'll just keep doing this and like figure out what I want to do. Cause I know that I don't want to go to school. And I had like, I did apply to a couple colleges and stuff. Cause I knew I was like, well, I don't want to not apply and then regret it. Like actually want to go. So I did apply and got accepted and stuff, but I just was like, nah, I don't want to do it. So whatever. I just like worked. And then I went to, after a year, I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm not in any different of a spot now mm. than I was a year ago. Like, I'm still just delivering pizzas, living at my mom's house. Like, what am I doing? So I went to a semester. I took like two classes of community college and I was just like, wow, this sucks. Like, this is like, I don't know. Cause you know how everybody talks about like, yeah, college is like way crazier than high school. And I'm sure it is, but like at the time, it definitely, or, or like the classes I was taking, it felt like way easier than high school. Oh. Like I studied less than I did in high school, cared way less than I did in high school and like still passed the classes. So I was like, okay, like eat, once I, like, I don't know, it just sucked. I didn't like it. Um, so I was like, well, whatever. So I didn't sign up for another semester. And then I 
was like, well, I just want to like get really good at making music. And so uh, I just decided like my grandparents lived in Palm Springs. So I was like, I'll just like move down there with them because I feel like I'm just like not doing anything in Fresno. So I moved down there for like two months or something. And then like a room opened up with my friends in the house, like where all the, uh, the dis disciple people had moved to. So uh, a room opened up there. So I lived there for a month and then I lived in their like uh, closet under their stairs for oh like gosh. a month or two. And then Willie moved here and we got a place together. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. and then I, then we moved in when like Dublos moved in and then I moved out and then now we're here. So it's <laughs> sick. <laughs> and then what clicked to you to do Vine and Snapchat? Uh, like, I don't know. I always, even when I was living back home in Fresno, I always wanted to make like, I even think I did make a couple, like, vines and stuff, but they were just, like, really stupid. And, I mean, all my vines were pretty stupid, but, like, I just never had the, like, confidence to just, like, do it. Um, and then when I moved here and I met, like, Getter and, and like, Nick Coletti and stuff, they were, they were obviously, like, pretty big on vine. And I was telling them, like, yeah, I just, like, I don't know, I, I just, like, have always wanted to do that and just haven't done it. And they were just like, yeah, you should just like do it. Who cares? And so I was like, okay. And so I did it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. And you got, a, you got a lot of new fans from that. Yeah, yeah. Did I got- trickle into music though? Yeah, like it's, it's interesting, I think, because there's definitely a lot of overlap between, or there was, especially when Vine was around and from like Getter and stuff like, reposting my my stuff like I definitely gained a lot of new fans from that and that's definitely like what I was known for at the time like people didn't really know I made music or anything which whatever like I, I was probably kind of mad about it like come on I put all this work into like trying to be good at making music and no one cares because they just think I'm some meme on vine or whatever but it definitely helped like grow my audience and I mean even still today like a lot of people I do like videos and stuff with uh, some other friends on YouTube like Cody Ko, Noah Miller and stuff. Yeah actually how did you meet Cody Ko? So that was like I, I met uh, well he, he just started following me like from Vine like we followed each other how long on ago was Twitter. That? This was a while I mean this was when Vine was still around yeah. so like Oh, so you to, knew him before he was even that big? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he was big on Vine. I don't oh. really know. Like, I was... I didn't really pay that much... Like, I didn't even know you could, like, message people on Vine. Like, ever. I found that out, like, when the app announced they were closing. I was just like, I found <laughs> yeah, out actually, you could I, message people. I didn't know people. until you told me. <laughs> yeah, you could message people on Vine, and I had no idea. So, I think Nick was like... Yo, you have like a bunch of messages or something. I, I opened up the messages. I had like hundreds of messages just from people that I had, I had no idea you could even do that. So, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but I also didn't pay that much attention to like follower counts or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't actually know. I'm pretty sure Cody was pretty big on Vine. I think he had like, I mean, I don't know. I think he had a few million followers on Vine probably, but I didn't really know. I just thought he was funny on Vine. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how... And then you uh, stayed friends with him. Throughout. Yeah, but I, I never like actually met him oh, until okay. actually it's a funny story how I met Cody in person for the first time. Uh, we had like known of each other and we had probably like, I think he tweeted like happy birthday one time or something to me and we like made a little joke. Uh, but like I met him randomly. There was a res show at exchange like probably like a year and a half, two years ago. Um, and we went to, me and my girlfriend went to our friend's apartment and I opened the door and Cody Ko is sat oh on the gosh, couch. So and we funny. were like, what? <laughs> and so like, we started talking a little bit and like that was the first time I met him in person. Um, and then, 
Yeah, we were just like talking about stuff and then uh, Noel like hit me up on Twitter, just like randomly DM'd me one time and said we should like get some food or whatever. And I did, so like me, him and Cody went and got food and then like we just like stayed in touch after that, mm -hmm. I guess. And how did Tiny Meat Gang come about? Um, well, that was like, so they, Noel messaged me one night and he was like, bro, this was when I didn't really, I mean, we're, we're close friends now, but at, this was only probably a month or two after like meeting them and starting to hang out with them a bit more. Noel just like messaged me late one night at like midnight, like, bro, uh, do you, do you have like a studio or know anywhere we could record a song? And I was like, no, dude, like I just work from like the living room of my apartment. Like, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And he's like, oh, okay. Like we got a good, like we have this like stupid song idea. And I don't, I don't know where they recorded it. I think they just like recorded it at their house, but they recorded it like the first like Tiny Meat Gang song or whatever and posted it. And I thought it was pretty funny. And then they did that before they started their podcast. And then they started a podcast. And then we just started like, no, actually. And then Diamond Pistols, um, our friend Christian, or my friend Christian, who I had like met through Sneak, mm -hmm. like hit them up and was like, yo, I'm a music producer. Like, I'd like to, if you want to like produce some music or whatever, like, let me know. And I was like, that's crazy, like, small world, like, this random dude that I know is hitting up, like, these other people that I know that have, like, no connections to each other. Yeah. But I don't know. So that was, like, cool and weird. So, like, then I started producing some songs for them. Uh, and, like, he was producing some. And so now it's, it's pretty, like... 50 50 like he produces about like half their music and I produce like half of it mm -hmm. um, and yeah. then how did you meet Borgor or Bygor? Um, so I met them through through like Getter because like when I met Getter it was around the time that I think he started working or he, he started becoming friends with Borgor and then like signed with or like you know, Steven at like Slay All started managing him and stuff uh, so it just happened like through through like just mutual friends, I guess like mm -hmm. get her. Yeah. Yeah What was it like performing at Red Rocks? Dude, I was I was really scared like I have like anxiety and uh, Like I was definitely extremely anxious the whole time like I was like really nervous I, I, I don't know how to describe it. it. It's like, I was just very nervous. And it was like, it was sick, but I, I was, I couldn't really like fully enjoy it until like the last like two minutes of my set. Oh, no. And I was like, okay, I'm cool, I got it. But the thing is like, I always talk to people about this too, because some people, I, like, I don't know, for me, I get really, I don't get nervous about like messing up or anything, because I don't really care. Like, not I don't care, but like, I don't know, if I like mess up a, a transition or something, it's like, it's not a big deal. Like, we're all just there having fun, so. Or it, it, I've even like pushed, like stopped, uh, completely stopped the music before, and it's like, I don't know, it doesn't really, it like, it sucks, like I messed up, but it's whatever, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't get nervous about that. It's just, there's something like nerve wracking about like just being in front of that many people like I guess. people just looking at you yeah just that many people looking at you you're like there like you're stuck there like anything you do like somebody <laughs> every like that many people can see it um so i don't know like i was really really nervous the whole time but then like the last few minutes i was like okay this is tight mm -hmm. and there was definitely like some moments where i was like whoa this is sick and th like there's definitely even though i was really nervous and stuff the whole time it was still really sick and I'm like super excited to play it again. But uh, yeah, it was it was super dope. Like the coolest show probably uh, that I've done, but also like really scary, <laughs> but cool. Yeah. yeah. What's the inspiration for villain? Uh, I just like, I was just messing around like 
streaming like some music production stuff and I was just trying to make a beat and so I was like clicking through uh, Omnisphere presets and I heard that preset that it, there's like some cheesy like preset that sounded like that like Lazy Town We Are Number One like meme song and so I was like oh hold on like let's I'll just remake that so I did and then I changed it a little bit so it's not the same exact melody mm -hmm. but it's still the same sound and stuff and it's like I don't know I basically just wanted to make something that sounded like stupid but also <laughs> good I don't know I feel like that's I often try to make stuff that sounds like really dumb but like <laughs> I, I don't know I just like stuff that's like silly yeah. or like weird yeah how do you say your music has changed compared to the early songs you've made? Uh, I'm definitely, like, I feel like there's like an arc of like, when you first start out, everything's cool and like you're not stressed out about making music or like it just kind of like flows, mm -hmm. but it sucks because you don't know what you're doing, but it's still really fun and like creative and weird. And then like once you start to learn more what you're doing, then the music is getting better, but like you're more stressed out about it. So you're like really concerned about all this other stuff besides just like making cool music. And then like you kind of grow past that. And like now I feel like I'm pretty, I'm like a little more confident now with like making something that I think sounds like good, I guess. But it's, but I still, I'm like trying to make stuff, I guess like. I'm just trying to make stuff that sounds good, but also, um, like, still have that weird, like, creativity to mm -hmm. it that I think, like, I was, I definitely lost, like, the fun, and I would just get, like, stressed out about it, and now I'm, like, not as stressed out yeah. anymore, um, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but, How it's, you, yeah. yeah, it's definitely, like, I'm, I'm trying to get, like, back to the weird like uh like weird creative stuff that you do when you first are I don't know I guess just creativity like I've just been trying to be more creative and like out of the box with the stuff that I've been making recently mm -hmm. um yeah how would you say you as a person compared to when you were younger um I mean I don't know like I think I care about stuff more now mm. like this is a weird like thing but growing up my uh my neighbors they had a, like kids and one of them was my age so we were like good friends and we'd hang out all the time and stuff this was when I was in like elementary school like third grade or whatever and uh like his so my neighbor like my friend's parents were my neighbors they were like I don't know exactly what they did, but they, both of his parents, uh, like, were helicopter pilots oh, for, wow. like, uh, the police or something. So, like, they would just be, like, like, that was their job. Like, they'd fly helicopters around. Um, and, like, at the time, I was just, like, cool. Like, I knew that, like, they flew helicopters. Like, you'd, you'd like, go up and wave to them at night and, like, they'd shine the light on you and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, like... Now, I'd be like, that's so sick, like, flying a helicopter is, like, a crazy cool thing yeah. that, like, no one gets to do, and, like, that's really cool and, like, crazy, I would never be able to do that, or what, you know, like, I, I just, like, value things more, I guess, but at the time, like, and this is, I was a really little kid then, but this even goes up until, like, high school and stuff, like, I just, like, didn't care about stuff, mm. but I don't know if that's just, like, if everyone's that way, or if it's, if that's, like, some character thing that I've like developed but I think it's like I just care about stuff more now than I used to yeah um which I think is cool because it makes you appreciate things more yeah so true uh even just like talking with like uh like recently I've been talking to my grandma and stuff like whenever I'm home we'll just sit and talk for a little bit and like it's crazy like she's telling me all these crazy stories about when she was younger and stuff and like when you're when you're younger or even a couple years ago like I just didn't really care and I don't know that like I didn't care it's just you don't like 
uh, put the same, like you don't realize that like other people are like you and have the same, like I, I'm able to like, I don't know the word if it's sympathize or empathize, but I'm definitely mm -hmm. able to like uh, put myself yeah, in like other empathize. people's situations and like evaluate them for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no, I that love that. type of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What would you say have been your biggest challenges in your life so far? Um, I guess like, uh, I guess I was talking about earlier, like probably anxiety. Cause ever since I was probably in like middle school or so, I've had like pretty bad anxiety. Um, and I mean, I still do, like I still get super anxious on planes and stuff, but I think that's pretty normal to get anxious on like airplanes and stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, to the point where like, I, I wouldn't do a lot of things because, because of anxiety and stuff. Uh, so I guess just like trying to like face that and deal with that is like cool. Yeah. Because like, like anytime you do something that like conquers your anxieties and stuff, you're like, whoa, cool, like yeah. I did it. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, facing like those types of challenges probably. Yeah. Um, what does love mean to you? Uh, I don't know. That's like, what does love mean to me? Uh, I don't know. Love is like important. Uh, I think if you don't like love stuff, then I don't know. I think love is just like intrinsic to like being a human and like people, even if it's not like loving people. Well, I think people just like love people. Yeah. Like, but uh, I don't know. Just like, I don't know. <laughs> That's a crazy question. I guess it's just like, you gotta remember that. I don't know. It's like, it's cool and important. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Last question: What do you need to be remembered for? Uh, probably like making cool music and being a good person and like. Yeah, probably that. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, inspiring other people. <laughs> I don't know, like, being, yeah, I guess just like being a good person, making good music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Bye, guys. <laughs>